else is the way, be it in the town or country or the busy avenue, Africa or Asia, the task is up to you. Be a missionary. Welcome to our missionary stories. We say for children, but these are for anyone who loves the Word of God and also those that would like to be a missionary someday. Adventure in Brazil, you're going to see how the people that truly serve the Lord in other countries and the hardships that they have by people that have never been taught about Christ. And also, these are for believers. Listen what God's Word says. This is what Satan does. You must understand that Satan is our enemy. He, the deceiver, he's a deceiver. He can lead people to commit sins that brings God's anger down upon them. The deceiver, he is the deceiver. And here's what God's word says. This is, you must memorize this verse. Every one of you must memorize it and put it up in your homes where every child can see it. Even as a child of God, God is warning you about this. In Ephesians 5, verse 6, Let no man deceive you with vain words. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The deceiver, this is what he does, to cause the wrath of God upon the children. And God's word warns in verse 7, this is Ephesians 5, 6, and 7. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. And I told you last week that we're not children of darkness, we're children of light. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, reprove them. And now listen to this, what our conversation is to be about. Use not vain words, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. This is what we are to do with our tongues. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light, and this is Christ shall give the light. This is what we are to do as believers. And why did Christ come? Here's why he came. And we need to mark these verses down, memorize them, and don't ever forget why Christ came. First John 3, 8. Listen at this. Christ is wonderful. He is, have, he is everything we need. He's our security. He's our protection. And listen at why he came. Verse 9. This is 1 John 3, verse 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why he came. This is why Christ came. He, Jesus Christ, this is, he declared man has a supernatural enemy and that this was one reason he came to earth to destroy this supernatural enemy. We have an enemy and the only way we can have victory is through the word of God. You must know it. We're willing to teach you. We want everybody to be a student of the Word of God. Let's pray. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we thank Thee 
for thy word. We thank thee for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. We thank thee for the victory that is ours through faith in Jesus Christ. We thank thee that thy word says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And all things whatsoever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If ye abide in me and I abide in you, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. So today it's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we're praying for 100 fold. And then this is the confidence we have if we ask anything according to thy will. We know thou dost hear, and we shall have the petitions we require of thee. And thou hast promised us to give us victory over all satanic powers, over all demonic spirits. And we thank thee for this victory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So we see what it's like to live in a place where the demonic spirits are rampant. Now we have the same all over the world. All over the world. Here where we live, all the evil and all the hatred is from Satan. We must be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Every true believer, walk humbly with thy God. This is the only way that any of us can get victory is through the word of God. You see, because he has given to us this power, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and into the uttermost parts of the world. Ye shall be witnesses unto me. Every one of us has this power of the Holy Spirit that we can resist the devil, but we have to know the word. Then we see, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every true child of God is a missionary because all of these people must be brought. Ye turn to God from idols to serve the true God. You must be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. So we saw how this awful worship of the devil and the power that, they ha that Satan has. One of the things that you must remember, God performs miracles. The devil performs miracles. But God is going to destroy all the works of Satan. All of his deceitfulness is going to be destroyed by God. This is why you should never, ever want to be disobedient in any way because of the love of Christ for us and the hatred of Satan for every believer. Every believer. He does everything in his power to keep you from coming to Christ because he hates Christ. He wants all the worship that belongs to him. This is why you must know that God is love. He loves you with an everlasting love. His mercy and his grace is everlasting. His grace is sufficient for every need that we have. So we saw how they were going to go to a meeting. They had picked Lucas up. They had seen all of the things in different villages. And when they got to this village, they were preparing for this awful time to prepare them for Lent. And they were almost ready, the Jeep, all of the people around them. They were full of liquor. They were drunk. They were full of the power of Satan. And they were doing terrible, terrible things. They threw a sign in their car to show them that this was the carnival. And it had this so they knew what was going on. They had never seen this before. This was something new 
that for them, all of a sudden, it was just like a complete miracle. Instead of turning the Jeep over, they walked away to join the other people that were at the carnival. Roger said, Dad, this is enough adventure for any day. Dad, why do you think they walked away? He said, were you praying, Roger? He said, I was praying real hard. He said, Lucas, were you praying? He said, yes. And his father said he was praying. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. That's why we must ask in Christ's name. He will give it you. But as a true believer, Christ is praying night and day in heaven for us. Remember, he said to Peter, Satan doth desire that he will sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you. This is what Christ is doing for us, praying for us. He's our great high priest today. So if nobody else has prayed for you today, as a believer, he prays for the believers, not for the world, but for the believers. So he has prayed for you. So as they, after they knew that they were safe, then they did what God tells us to do, to pray for our enemies. First, they praised God for protecting them. Then they prayed for every person at the carnival that they would be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. They prayed for those enemies that would have done great harm had not God protected them. You see, we as believers have divine protection, divine security. Are not they all ministering spirits, ministering to everyone that shall be heirs of salvation? As a child of God, and if you're a true child of God, you have this divine protection. You have the angelic host watching over you because in John 1:12. God's word says, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we are the children of God. We have the angelic host watching over us. Everything about being a child of God, a gift, Jesus Christ is a gift, is rewarding every day. This is what God wants. So then they came to the little church where they were going to be. Pastor Silas was out waiting for them, welcomed them with open arms. So when they got inside, of course, Roger was looking for someone his age, and he saw a little boy that should be about his age, a little blonde-headed boy, and he went over to talk to him. He said, my name is Roger. What is your name? He said, Carl. He said, do you live around here? And he said, yes. He shook his head, yes. He didn't talk. After he said, Carl, that's, he didn't talk. Then he said, do you go to church here? He shook his head, no. Then he asked another question. Roger wanted to know what was going on. He said, do you go to church someplace else? Where do you go to church? He said, my family don't go to church. And then he said to Roger, do you go to school? And Roger said, yes, but I don't like it. And this was time for Carl to be surprised. He said, oh, I go to school and I love it. I want to go back to Germany where my father is from and go to the university that he went to when he was in school. And this really surprised Roger. But Roger said, I don't like to go to school. He said, because my Brazilian friends only go up to the fourth grade. Oh, he said, I love going to school and I love to study. So this was a real surprise. He couldn't believe this. So then all of a sudden the music started and Lucas got up and sang the most beautiful song. He sang and they all were so thankful. 
and his father was the piano player. So in between the times that they were not singing, he got to talk to Carl to find out more about him. And he told him that his father's parents were missionaries to China. And then after the message came on, and the pastor had a wonderful message of salvation. He taught him the Word of God. And then he asked him, he said, do you come here to church often? He said, no, I usually stay outside and listen to the music. That was a, that was a real surprise for Roger. So he taught the, every person that was listening. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then he said something that was unusual that Carl did not understand. He said Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then he told him that 1 Corinthians 15.3 and 4, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And then he made salvation very plain. So afterwards, Lucas sang another song, and then the pastor asked if there was anybody that would like to come forward and accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And Carr looked at Roger, and he stood up. And Roger said, you want me to go up front with you? And he said, yes. So what did he do? He came up front, and after this, he accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. And then his father came over, and he said, Guess what Carl did today? He accepted Christ as Savior. So his, when he said this, Carl started to cry. And his father told him that when anyone receives Christ, the gift of eternal life, that they're usually happy and that there's rejoicing in heaven. So right now, every person that's listening that don't know Christ, you can do what this word says. Right here it is, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can believe these verses that I just gave you and receive Christ as Savior. That's what happened to Carl. And Carl began to cry. Well, he said there's rejoicing in the presence of angels in heaven over one sinner that repented. And this was so, Carl didn't understand all of these things that they were telling him. It's just like you that is listening today. You may trust in an organization. You may trust in your church. You may trust in what man says to you about salvation, or receiving Christ, or being born again. But these verses that I just gave you are the only way that anybody can be saved, because Christ shed his blood that you could have eternal life and forgiveness of sin, because he is a gift. He's the only person in the world that has ever come from heaven to go to the cross, to die for you, and that you are cleansed by his blood. We are washed from our sins in his own blood. And there is not another person in the world that has died. No religion can save. Nothing can save but Christ's blood. He died he was in the tomb for three days and three nights. He rose again, and he's heaven today preparing a place for each of us, praying night and day. Any other person that you are depending on to save you, or any organization or any church, you are deceived. You cannot add anything to what Christ has done. Has any organization, any church, any religion ever, ever 
has any person that loves you enough to die for you. There's not any, any other way, any other way except through Christ. You are being deceived today by the many, many people that think good works will get you to heaven. Good works has nothing to do with going to heaven. You must be born again. You must believe in Christ. That is the good news. And many, many people are being deceived and you're going to be left on this earth and you're going to go through the awful tribulation period and then that's not the worst, going to an awful place called hell and there is a place called hell and there's a place called heaven and there's no in between. There is no in between. And God's word says, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're cast into the lake of fire. And you are going to be in the lake of fire with the worms crawling on you where the worms never die. And you're going to be there with all of the evil and the corruption of man today that believes in Satan and worshiping him. He has nothing to offer. Only Christ can save. There, anybody would have to be out of their mind. You cannot be in your right mind and not accept Christ. Because the, you, if to reject this great gift, something has to be wrong. You are being deceived. And this is what you must know. So this is what happened to this little boy. And what a blessing it was. And when he began to cry, the, his... Roger's father didn't know what to do, and he told him. He said his father didn't go to church. He says, well, can I go talk to your father? And he said, no, he's not home. I would love for you to go talk to him. But then he said, well, maybe we can come tomorrow. He said, no, he's leaving on the bus at 6 o'clock in the morning, and he won't be there. And he said, we will pray. We will pray. So he told him that they would pray, that God can do anything. But he says, you don't know my father. You don't know my father. And he said, we believe that God will work a miracle. You see, these people were so steeped in the evil and the corruption of the people of Brazil that it was hard for them to believe that Christ could do anything. And he can. With, he, he, nothing is impossible if you believe. And if you have unbelief, you won't receive any good thing from the Lord. If you're praying for something and you're doubting that God will do it, then you may as well not pray because if you're a child of God, you have just seen what miracles God can do and he can do anything. And he wants to save every person in the world. So then they went home went back to Lucas's house and spent the night, and he couldn't sleep. He, Roger couldn't sleep. He, and then he heard it raining. It was raining so hard. And he went, er, woke his father up early before daylight. And he says, oh, father, it's raining really hard. It's a bad storm. Maybe Carl's father will not be able to go on the bus because the roads were muddy and I, maybe he won't be able to go. And he said, we will go to Carl's house and see. They went to Carl's house. And when they got there, he treated them very nice, told them to come in. He said, my son has been telling me all about you. And he said, do you know Christ as Savior? And he said, no. He became really angry at first. And then he said, would you like to come to the meeting tonight? He said, Carl loves you very much. And he would really be pleased if you would come to the meeting. Because they treated him so nice, when he wasn't nice, he got his book out, his album of his mother and his father. You see, he was originally from Germany. And his mother and his father went to China to be a missionary. And he rebelled 
against his missionary parents, left home, went to Germany, and he was the unhappiest person in the world. And so are you. If you are a child of God and you are rebelling against him, if your parents are Christians and you're rebelling against them and not accepting Christ, you are unhappy and miserable as can be. So, when he, the meeting time came, he went with Carl. After the service was over, Roger's dad went back to him and talked to him. And he said, do you want me to pray with you? No, I don't want you to pray with me. I can pray myself. My father and mother taught me how to pray. And he began to pray out loud with tears in his eyes, weeping like a child, shaken, and prayed and asked forgiveness for all the years he had been rebellious to his parents. What happened? A child brought him to Christ. What about you children? Thank you for tuning in. When you tune back in, you're going to find out so many wonderful things that God is doing to one couple that left America to go to Brazil to serve the Lord. You can serve Him right here where you are. Every neighbor that you have, you can reach them for Christ. We pray that you will. Pray for us daily. Thank you for your prayers. Jesus is the way, the Lord is soon returned.